Odysseus, the Epic Myth of the Hero, Book 12. Next morning, women drawing water found me there and wrapped my naked limbs in cloth and bore me into Troy directly through the Skyan Gate. The guards permitted me to pass without a second glance. The world began to spin and slipping into darkness. I thanked Athena. Later I awoke inside a room that glowed with fading sunlight. Women's hands with long and shapely fingers tipped in scarlet points sponged my aching limbs. Her wavy curls seemed beaten from the same bright gold as made her headband. Hanging down in glorious avalanche she, as she see, bent to tend my wounds, I raised an awestruck hand to touch her hair as if I touched a statue of the goddess, pushing it aside to see her face. Her beauty filled my soul with terror. Helen, most desired and therefore most unsettled woman in the world, was now my nurse. She bathed my wounds, and once she saw I had come to, spoke these canny words. If I had need to sneak among my foes to cut a throat or steal a secret, first I'd dye my hair with whorish henna then, and once it dried I'd bid a serving wench go fetch me twenty warriors soaked in battle sweat and let them have me till I reeked like them. I know a witch who has a brew that chaps the lips and blackens eyes. I've slipped it in the wine of certain Trojan bitches gossiping. And this foul potion I would drink myself to cause disgust in men, where once I only brought delight. And then, so out of character, I'd prowl the camp of brave Achaeans and work my will unknown. But unless it were my plan to only get in close enough to sink my blade and then myself meet death, certain kings I would avoid, because no matter how you try, the eyes of lovers cannot be disguised from one another. So here I wash the seeming body of a fugitive bad slave, all whipped and shorn, but gazing deep into your eyes I see and recognize an ancient suitor for my hand, outcast Odysseus. Now I felt her dagger at my throat. Her face descended down upon my own as if she were a raging goddess out of milky cloud. Her eyes of blue stuck out like tempest seas. She snarled and spoke these words. Speak, or else my cat shall lap your scheming blood. I know by heart each word I spoke to save my life. Helen, like to Aphrodite most of mortal women, easier by far to cast a shadow on the sun than trick your cunning eye, or greet your words with lies. I captured lovesick Helenus, who in his wine unbidden told us all about the oracle of Troy, the great Palladium, and that as long as it remains preserved inside her temple, Priam's mighty city never will be sacked. I'm here to steal the sacred stone that guards the massive walls against attack and hasten Troy's demise and end this war. Help your countrymen again, Helen. Help me steal the great Palladium. This said, she took her dagger from my throat and spoke these pouting words. I weary of these Trojans and their black-eyed hatred. All I ever did was bow before the will of Aphrodite. I was threatened with her hatred often enough. If I failed to please the king she bid me please, I manifest her stark force here upon this earth that bears all creatures. Scorn me at your peril, for you scorn the very will of loving Aphrodite. At the whim of perfect gods, how can one single woman be to blame? I long to see again my native land, and speak my mother tongue, and hold my darling daughter that I left so long ago. I even miss my husband from those bygone days, though to him I merely am his premier prize to flaunt before men's eyes and capture back when stolen in his sleep. 
only wanting me because so many other kings do also want me in their bed. Not to know and grow together to old age, so much as make display of his good luck, reminding all of his time-honored sanction to stem their rash desires. I'll help you, brash Odysseus, to steal the great palladium, if and only if you help me leave this fated city now before Achaean fighters breach the fabled walls and sack the sacred citadel of Troy. You think me slut at every opportunity and little actual use in dire undertakings? I swear the stone is mine to take. The temple priestess Pyrrha, hair of flame, desires to be my lover. I will win this prize with just one kiss. The said and Helen reached to take my hand to seal our bargain, pressing so I felt the claws that tipped her soft white skin of milk. She bid her serving girls to enter then and bathe my wounds while she reclined upon a window still and gazed abroad. I had small time of respite from my woes before there came a clamor at the door and Hecuba, the queen of high-walled Troy and mother of man-slaughtering Hector, entered like a sudden chill that grips the spine and spoke these bitter words to Helen as her servants scurried. Evil beauty, in you the gods have mixed extremes of fire and ice. You are a lie to hang a hope upon, <clears throat> as when a thirsty sailor Long at sea sights land with fresh water and sweet to wet his aching lips. He steers his ship to meet his utmost pressing need, ignoring signs of peril on his way, until the savage rocks appear and rip his hull to splinters. Too late we feel the hooks beneath your lovely flesh. And now that foolish Paris molders in the underworld, another of my sons you've trapped. With Hector dead, you play the whore for all to see with slaves. If only ancient custom still prevailed and strength of youth were mine again, I'd haul you to the deepest, darkest vault of Aphrodite's shrine where matters such as these were settled once between women with knives in darkness. Blessed by her, your death would free the world of half its woe. The said and Helen stood to speak her mind, Mother, if my death were such a boon for man, I'd gladly bear my throat for you to cut, my blood to win the favor of the gods. My beauty is an accident of birth, design, if any to my life, an imposition from without, by gods or men, but not my own. My only choice at each and every turn as object of theft has been to kill myself or suffer on as victim of blind hope. The goddess urges my safekeeping here, not I. If all would turn me loose, the world would neither see nor hear from Helen more. And in some quiet place, I'd spend my days remaining all alone. But what's the use of wishes here and now? Look upon this well-whipped slave that lies upon my couch. He is a famous man among Achaeans, gathered round Troy's wall. He is a ruthless spy, but I saw through his wounds. Now Hecuba advanced upon me, claws and snarls. Her eyes lit up with jaundiced rage and hate. I know this man. He came here once before with Menelaus, your former mate, to plead for your return and free and open passage of the Hellespont for all Achaean ships of trade, or else they bring us war the like of which the world had never seen or heard. I recognize eloquent Odysseus. Now speak, or else I'll bid my guards to cut the lying tongue right out of your false mouth. A woman, weak by nature, checked at every turn by man, becomes a terror when she finally gains the upper hand in war. Sweat poured into my wounds, and words escape my mouth like prisoners fleeing burning cells. Hecuba, I am, you see, completely at your mercy. Take me as your suppliant. 
I am no good to you a corpse, but living, I could render you a precious service yet, if only you will let me live. The Queen of Cho Troy picked up a golden pin and laid the point upon my cheek just below my eye. The best and brightest of my sons are dead. What service could you render me? A naked captive foe, more precious than revenge. What greater joy than leave you with your strength, but rob you of your sight? Or do you know the road to hell and can bring me back my sons I've lost to endless war? What joy is left for me upon this earth? And now I spoke all of the truth I dared, you know, and I know, Troy is fated to fall. In the conflagration that will come, I swear to save the lives of you and yours. My word has weight with Agamemnon. Help me end this war. Release the great Palladium and kneel to destiny, while yet some of your stuns still live. My death will not forestall the fate of Troy, nor slake your thirst for vengeance. Mercy now will save what's left to you. A pang of hope betrayed her honest wrath, and Hecuba addressed these words to Helen. Can trust be placed upon the words of such a man as this? To cheat sure death, any lie will do. The sudden Helen shook her head. He would keep his word if made to swear an oath to bright Athena. Holding Agamemnon true to such a pact, obliging him without consent, could be the tricky part. To claim to speak for kings is deadly business, like as not. I spoke these winged words to push my point. What serves his need, he'll greet with fair respect. This endless war has drained his gold away. And if I lay the great palladium upon the dais holding up his lion throne, he'll take it as a token of your earnest esteem, yen, to end the war. But that is not the last of what the Trojan royal house must do to keep their line intact and quench the flames that threaten each and every blood-soaked building in the town should violence be let to reach its natural conclusion. Hecuba could not help but raise her eyebrows in admiration. Slow and painful death, the slightest word away, and still he makes demands. Helen shrugged, the greatest lies speak all the truth they dare. I knew I had but one more chance to save my life. You're right, to hold King Agamemnon true to such a pact might prove a vain and thankless task in war's vast unpredictability. But if in twelve days' time you send us back the beauty Helen, swearing also free the an open passage of the Hellespont, then who yet live among your sons may yet attain a hale and green old age at home instead of bloody death defending loved ones. Yield to our original demands, then war will leave your lands like passing rain. Queen Hecuba removed the golden pin, poised to pierce my eye, and spoke these words. Nude and fit to be consumed by death upon a word, and all that you request is every precious thing we have except our very lives. What fools our hopes reduce us to. We share this weakness equally, audacious Odysseus, you and I. I'll let you go and pray your honor over master's greedy hunger in the end, but how to steal the great palladium without a general hue and cry. The beauty Helen rose and slipped her dagger back into her belt and said, now leave this task to me. She walked straight into the night and drained, I drifted into troubled sleep where phantoms rose. I heard, I dreamt I heard an ardent sigh and then a final scream of death. And when I started back awake, before me stood the beauty Helen, her rosy lips like petals crushed and bloodstains on her breasts. She held the great palladium, 
the sacred stone of Mother Earth, and offered me the prize and spoke these cunning words. Now swaddle this as would a loving mother with her child, and leave the way you came. Your nakedness will cause all men to look away in shame, and it is your surest guise. With every step you take, recall your binding oath to bright Athena then. Hecuba replaced her veil and did not speak a word, but only took me down a secret passageway leading well beyond the towering walls of Troy. And though I searched in days to come, I never found the door again. Thank you.